Hey guys, it's Capricorn season. Stick around to get your personalized Periscope reading and see what the season has in store for you. Hello and welcome to my channel. If you haven't met me yet, I am Lisa. I am a certified tarot consultant who has this tarot channel here on YouTube. And on this channel, I do pick a card readings, meditations, other tarot related videos, and taroscopes like this one. So if you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button so that you will get this reading and next month's reading as well. So if you are new to my Terrascope readings, let me just kind of run down really briefly. Uh, first off, I do have a, a video all about my Terrascope readings and what those look like and how to take the best advantage of them. So if you haven't seen that, I would recommend that you go check that out first and then come back. But if you have been here before, um, just a reminder, I have two parts to this. In the beginning, we will just talk briefly about Capricorn season, what that's all about, what we can all expect during this uh, season of the year. Basically runs um, from late December to late January every year. So we're gonna talk about that. And then the next part is that I'm going to go ahead and pull um, a card for each sign of the zodiac. And then at the end, we are simply going to go ahead and pull one oracle card for everyone involved to help give us some additional guidance for this Capricorn season. And that will be our reading for today. So let's talk about Capricorn season in general and Capricorns in general while I am shuffling. Uh, so Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign and it's interesting because earth is oftentimes really slow moving but cardinal signs tend to be all about kind of pushing forward and being dynamic and looking ahead. And so to me, I just think those things blend together really beautifully this time of year. Um, so with Capricorn season, you're looking at things uh, like you know, planning and looking forward to the future and thinking about how you can um, build something up um, on a platform or out of a really solid foundation. So a lot of times people look at Capricorns and say, um, you know, hey, you know, Capricorns are reserved or they're really careful or they're, they're stubborn or whatnot. But the idea is more that they are, um, you know, thoughtful, but then once they figure things out, they're really motivated uh, to move ahead. So um, this time of year uh, for me is a really uh, strong time of year for me to start jumping on new, um, uh, new year's resolutions and um, looking at things like how can, um, you know, how can I get to certain goals and whatnot? How can I build a platform forward? And, and it's just a very pragmatic time of year. So um, I really like it. Maybe that's because I'm a planner, um, a little bit nerdy that way. But that is what the season is all about. So if you are familiar with my Terrascope readings, you know that I suggest that you watch three different signs. And that would be your sun, your moon, and your rising sign. And the way that uh, the card is interpreted could be a little bit different um, depending on if it's, you know, which one of those signs it is for you. So, you know, once again, if you haven't seen that initial video, I would watch that. Otherwise, um, let's go ahead and jump right in. The cards are for the most part shuffled. And I will be starting with Aries and moving on from there. Okay, so let's start with the sign of Aries. Aries, let's see what you get. Um, and you have the Knight of Staffs for your Capricorn season. So um, Aries, you know, this is interesting because it is a very fiery card and um, Aries is a very fiery sign. Um, but what I'm seeing here for you is that things might actually be going a little bit more slowly than you would typically see them. Um, I'm actually, um, for most of you, I'm seeing a period of rest 
um, you know, backing off a little bit, being willing to um, step down a bit from uh, kind of a fast speed that you may have been pushing for a lot of things, and just be willing to uh, kind of go with the flow and um, be willing to, to slow down as things are asking you to do so. Um, so whether or not this is your sun, moon, or rising sign that might give you a good indication on what area of your life we're looking at, uh, but I would say don't be surprised if there's slowdowns, and in fact, it might be right to slow down and um, kind of take a breather and get a different perspective on things. All right, moving on to Taurus. Taurus, okay. So this is the Nine of Swords, but it is reversed. And so, you know, I would much rather see the Nine of Swords reversed than upright because what I'm seeing here is a breakthrough in something that has been um, a struggle for you or frustrating for you, especially on a very, very mental level. Um, so if this is your moon sign, then this might be something where, you know, you've had your head battling your heart and it's been really frustrating for you and that might be an issue. Uh, if it's your, your rising sign there, um, or your sun sign, you know, it could be some things that are more external or more driving you, you know, uh, that could be more logical, but uh, very possibly you've been kind of battling your head versus uh, perhaps your feelings for other people or how you've been interacting with other people or the world or your own um, projects or internal motivations. So seeing this, um, what it's telling me is that you are going to be kind of pulling out of that um, kind of frustration and that inability to kind of move forward and move past something. So the end is, uh, or the finish line, I guess I should say, is close. Um, in regards to that particular piece. And depending on which sign it is for you, we'll give you an indication on where that's sitting in you uh, for your life. All right, Gemini, taking a look for you. Okay, Eight of Swords for Gemini. All right, Gemini, so when I see the Eight of Swords, I'm seeing and I'm, you know I get this idea and this feeling of um, being trapped or being stuck or being unable to move forward. And if you look here, you know, you can see, um, you know, that this, there we go. You can see there's a little stake in the ground and, you know, he's unable to move. Um, and there's even this uh, line of swords here holding him back. So when I see this, this particular card, it, you know, it makes me wonder what types of things are holding you back. Um, how can you break free? And a lot of times with swords cards, we're looking at things that are very mental or things that are very, you know, internal um, or, you know, coming at you from a, a very, you know, kind of internal mental type of way. So whether this is your sun, moon, or rising sign is going to give you a better indication on whether or not this is dealing with the relationships or goals or or whatnot, but um, think this month, how can you move past blockages? How can you move away from things that are holding you back? Because, um, you know, there is that chance where you might be feeling trapped. So how can you move forward in those things this month? All right, moving on to Cancer. Wow, lots of swords this month, and I, I really shuffled these guys. Um, Cancer, I'm seeing the Ten of Swords for you. So what this is telling me for you is that you have something in your life where it's just time to move on from. And actually, this is a very, gra very graphic looking card. Um, you know, you can tell it's not a great, great symbolism here. But the nice thing about the Ten of Swords is as bad as this is, it doesn't get any worse than this. In fact, things get better, right? You can't go anywhere from here but up. So if you are looking at a Ten of Swords type situation, you are feeling um, probably very mentally, you know, headwise, um, as though you are done, completely done with something. You're so ready to move on. And so this could be the season for you to actually move forward with something um, that maybe is just really, really overdue for you to move ahead with. Um, and depending on whether that's your sun, moon, or rising sign, will give you an indication on what that is for you. Um, but I would say, you know, look to the future. Don't get bogged down. Don't be stuck to the ground like this dude is. Be ready to uh, move on to something else. All right, moving to uh, Leo. Leo, I love seeing the Ace of Swords. I, guys, I can't, there, this is four swords in a row. That is really interesting to me. Um, I think we're tapping into uh, a little bit of that kind of uh, logical uh, Capricorn energy that, that 
can happen this time of year. But Ace of Swords, this is a fantastic card. This is a card of victory. This is a card of new beginnings in regards to thoughts and projects. This is a card of um, getting what you want. This is a card of winning. Um, there's so many things that go along with this card, but this is an excellent card, a great card. So whether or not this is your sun, moon, or rising, this is gonna indicate a little bit as to whether you're talking about you know, emotional, um, internal things, um, whether you're looking at you know, relationships with other people, um, goals of your own, but that is a fantastic card to have. Um, go into the season with a winning attitude because that's gonna serve you really well. Um, the energy is there for you to be able to tap into that really well. All right, Virgo. Virgo, so we have the 10 of coins, but reversed for you. And it's interesting because Virgo, you are an earth sign. This is an earth season, and this is a very earthy card, but it is reversed. So what that is telling me um, is that I'm, I'm feeling for you that this season is going to be a season of um, maybe feeling just a tiny bit out of touch, almost like you feel 90% like you're on the right path, okay? But there's that 10% that's just making you sort of question things, okay? So take some time to reevaluate during this Capricorn season. Um, take some time to think and um, kind of see where you might be missing the mark just a little bit. Um, Take a look at what sign this is for you to determine where that is. Virgo, I know that you're okay with analyzing things. So um, go ahead and do that. I'm saying 90% um, you're gonna feel pretty good, um, but there's gonna be a 10% where you're gonna feel like you're just a little out of step with things. And just take some time to reevaluate, review things, um, use this really uh, logical and practical Capricorn season to kind of get some things in line for you. Um, but not a bad card, just, I think it's a, an evaluative, evaluative, is that a, is that a word? It is today. Um, that's the type of card it is for you. All right, moving on to Libra. Libra 10 of vessels, I believe is what they call them here in this particular deck. 10, I said 10, I meant four, goodness, four of vessels. So um, Libra, the what I'm seeing for you um, coming into this month is uh, a bit of self-reflection. I'm seeing opportunities coming to you, especially in regards to things um, artistically, emotionally, um, coming from other people where things may be getting offered to you that might end up being um, uh, beneficial for you, things that you might have to look at and make a determination on if it's something that would work for you or not. Um, but there's definitely options there for you. There is a bit of a tendency sometimes uh, with the energy around this card for you to be a bit hypercritical. Um, Libra, this, I, I think you know that sometimes that is just the case anyway. Um, so, you know, if you have options in front of you, you don't need to weigh everything, you know, to death. Just, um, you know, take a look at things, make some decisions and move forward. Okay, Scorpio. Scorpio, we have judgment, but reversed. Um, so when I see this, guys, it when I see judgment reversed, a lot of times what it means for me is that idea of not being able to move forward with something or feeling as though you're kind of stuck in the same old cycle, okay? So you might actually, you know, go into, you know, from December into January um, in this Capricorn season feeling as though like, oh, I'm in, I'm in, stuck in the same thing, same thing. Um, and if you're feeling that way, um, and especially, you know, think about if this is your sun, moon, or rising sign, but however this is impacting you, if you're feeling as though you're stuck and you're, you're not able to move out of a particular cycle, it's, it's a sign saying, hey, it is time to move on. I mean, look, there's even here this little um, skull, you know, in this concept of, you know, this idea of death and rebirth and moving ahead. So how can you break out of maybe a cycle that is no longer serving you or something that is, is harmful to you? How can you move away from that? Um, and that's what I'm seeing for you, Scorpio. Sagittarius, what do we have for you this season? Okay, we have five of vessels, but reversed. So when I see this, especially with Capricorn season, you know, as we're rounding out the year, um, this is a time of year where you might be looking back and saying, man, look at all those things that I could have had, but I didn't. 
Um, and if I turn this upright, you can see that this one's dripping out and we've got this one broken here. Um, but when the card is reversed, it's a reminder for you to not dwell so much on things that have not been going well. It is asking you to look ahead. It is asking you to recognize those things that have gone well for you and are going well for you and incorporate, incorporate those things more and try to set aside the things that are not going so great. So whether this is your sun, moon, or rising sign is gonna give you an indication on how this energy is going to impact you, but keep that in mind. Um, you know, Look at the good things, um, try to set aside or move past those things that have been frustrating for you. All right, Capricorns, and happy birthday if this is your sun sign. Let's take a look. Um, Capricorn, we have the five of coins, but reverse. So a very earthy card, okay, um, for an earthy sign in an earthy time of year. When I look at the five of coins reversed, um, there's a couple of things that are, are coming to mind here. Um, and I'm actually getting two, it, I'm getting two things here. Um, for some of you, I'm getting this concept of reconnecting, reconnecting with people, reconnecting with um, something that you have lost, um, finding something that has been misplaced, so all of those things, I'm sort of getting that. And that, um, depending on if this is your sun, moon, or rising, that might help you make a determination on where that's going to come through, where that kind of coming back energy is going to come into your life. Um, I'm also seeing, and I'm getting this, I and mean, it might just be the Capricorn energy in general this time of year, but I'm getting this idea of looking again at what has um, worked for you and what has not worked for you and evaluating that um, and considering those things that have been good for you and keeping those and ditching the rest. Um, and this is kind of the second card in this group that I've seen that's really spoken to that, but um, those are kind of the two things I'm seeing for that. Take the one that you think fits you the best. Moving on to Aquarius. All right, Aquarius, we have the star, such an interesting card <laughs> for this particular deck. Um, what a great card going into the new year, going into Capricorn season. So when I see Aquarius and, and Aquarius, I feel like Aquarians have typically a fairly um, kind of unique view on the world and fairly optimistic attitude. So when I see the star for you, um, I mean, shoot for the stars, go for, um, you know, your highest goals and aspirations during this season. Um, set up some, you know, really attainable but also wonderfully wild goals for yourself um, this upcoming year. Um, go for it. Whatever you've been hoping to do, go for it. Um, if this is your sun, moon, or rising sign, it's going to kind of change sort of the focus area in your life that this is that this is hitting. But when you see the star, there's a lot of uh, support for you, especially from the universe or your guides or God or whatever you follow spiritually is gonna be there and kind of hold and uplift you. Okay, and moving on to Pisces. And Pisces, we have the three of vessels, but reversed. So uh, for you moving into this Capricorn season, um, one of the big, big thing I'm getting for you is this idea of um, being independent and being willing to move forward even if other people are uh, maybe talking down your idea of what is a good idea, or what makes the most sense. Uh, take a look, sun, moon, or rising sign, guys, as to where this is going to impact you. Um, the other thing, too, and this is kind of funny, but um, it's just kind of the way that I'm seeing it uh, visually. Um, and, and if you kind of squint, so sort of squint at the screen, Pisces, and they sort of look like candles. <laughs> <laughs> even though they're not, but they sort of look like candles to me. And and especially so when it's reversed and I'm kind of looking at it uh, through the camera here. But when I'm, I'm seeing that, the other thing that's sort of coming to my mind and the visual that's coming to my mind is this idea that we're in a really dark period of the year um, as we move away from the, um, the winter solstice and move forward, we're going to start seeing more light. So if you are someone... Um, that is affected by the shortness of the days or you have seasonal affect disorder and you're dealing with a heavy winter time right now, um, 
just you know keep in mind that that's going to be getting better if you have to do something to sort of move away from that or counteract that keep that in mind as we're moving into the season so that's what i'm seeing for each of the signs i'm going to go ahead and move to the next card poll here so let me go ahead and clear this away Okay, so on to the second part of the reading here. We're going to do an oracle card reading uh, with the Earth Power Oracle deck. Uh, no matter what signs you follow, we're going to get a bit of um, some extra guidance here. And I'm going to ask you to tap into your intuition. So while I'm shuffling, uh, go ahead and take some deep, deep breaths in and out and get yourself into that kind of fuzzy headspace. Um, and by the way, guys, if you enjoyed this deck, um, this is the Alchemical Tarot. I did a walkthrough for that. I'll include that link so that you can check it out. It's a really neat and interesting deck. Um, and the story of how the deck came about is also really kind of cool. So if you haven't seen that, I would check that out as well. Okay. So... Um, I'm going to show you three different cards here, guys, and the ones that I show you are going to determine how this message comes across for you. So take a deep breath in and out and take a look at these three cards, card one, card two, card three, and decide which one is speaking to you today. And if you chose card one, then this oracle card that I'm going to pull is going to be speaking to your spirit. If you chose card two, it's speaking to your heart. If you chose card three, it is speaking to your head. Okay. So the card that I pull is the Valley of the Kings. And the message here, remember spirit, heart, or head, take this in whichever way works for you. Death is transformation. It is a natural part of life. There are consequences to all actions, no matter how small. So death is transformation. It is a natural part of life. There are consequences to all actions, no matter how small. And that is it, guys, for this month's Tarot Scope. I'm so happy that you are here hanging out with me. Um, as a reminder, guys, this is obviously a much more general reading. Um, if you want something more specific in a one-on-one -on -one reading, feel free to um, hop over to my site and you can book that with me. Thank you again for hanging out with me and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.